But yeah, there was this one girl who had a full ass fiance that she said was watching her kid that wasn't his. And then she got asthma because she was kissing a guy. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Erica. Nice to see you all again. And you're watching this video for one of two reasons. One, you're subscribed to me or you know who I am and you want to see if I made it out alive. I'm alive. Or two, you're researching bootcamp videos because you want to like get, a, get an idea of what it's like and if you should actually go to bootcamp or maybe you are going to bootcamp in like a week and you're like binging all these videos because you're mad nervous. Well, today I'm contributing back into this cesspool of bootcamp experience videos. Realistically, a person that I live with in two months in my division has a completely different experience for me. That's to say that even though we all go through the same evolutions, is what they're called in boot camp, like same activities, I guess you could say, we'll have a completely different experience because of who we are, how we process things. Swim is like the thing you do on the first week of boot camp after you get like processed after P days. And for the majority of people in my division, that shit was like, hey, they love to swim. For me, that was literally the biggest obstacle of boot camp. And there are still people in my division that have not left boot camp because they could not pass swim. But we'll get to that later. So I'm just gonna dive right into it. I even wrote like little bullet points that I wanna fucking talk about because I don't want this video to be like 30 fucking minutes long because nobody's gonna watch it. So let's talk about for me, which was the hardest part of boot camp. I already said swim was hard. But this was harder. Night of arrival in your first two weeks of boot camp, I'm gonna say are the hardest days of boot camp. You're like, why? Like, it should be easy because you just got there, you know? They're not gonna be too hard on you. They are extra strict and mean to you. And by they, I mean like RDCs in your first two weeks because they're trying to like mold you into like this little recruit mindset. You're not a civilian anymore. You're a Navy, you're a RTC, recruit training command, recruit. So just to give you a little backstory on my night of arrival, I came from New Jersey. There's only one uh, Navy boot camp, so that's in Chicago. I had to take a flight there. The night of arrival, why was it so hard? Hmm, probably because you don't sleep for like the first two fucking days. So you get off that flight, you kind of like check in, check in like it's a hotel. You check in at RTC and they're yelling at you. I know you've seen the video already. You call your family, let them know you're doing okay. They give you everything that you need. So if you're wondering what you should pack for boot camp, I would say pack light. Like, you're gonna see some people bring in full fucking suitcases and you're gonna see people bring nothing at all. For example, I brought an address book, I brought a diary, which I highly recommend you get both of those things. An address book just to write down like your family members information so you could write them letters and call them. And even if you like memorize their shit, I still suggest bringing it because trust me, you're gonna be fucking like exhausted during boot camp, and your mind is going to blank out. So write everybody's shit down. Uh, just so you can look back to it when you call them or write them a letter. And honestly, I would say those are like the main important things you need because surprisingly, they do give you lotion. They give you razors, shaving cream. Okay, man, if you don't bring anything, bring running shoes. You do not want to wear the GoFasters that come, that you get in boot camp. They are stiff as fuck, uncomfy as fuck. I had a pair of Skechers that I wore throughout my entirety of boot camp. They were super comfy. So get something that feels good standing in all day and also something that you can run in. But mainly standing because you're going to be doing a lot of fucking standing. And I would recommend all black because you don't want to stick out and they might give you a hard time if you bring colorful shoes. And you just, you just don't want to have a reason for RDCs to pick on you, honestly. And a watch. A watch is super important. You could buy one at the next, but the next is really overpriced. I bought a watch on Amazon for like $10. I guess bring like little travel size hair stuff. You have to remember if you're going through a plan, you cannot bring humongous size hair products, body products, or and or you have a very small storage space, your A and B drawer, which is literally like a tiny fucking rectangle. Although I did see girls stack that shit like it was a fucking Target hair care section. So it's all about how you could store shit. But if you want to make your life easier, don't bring that much shit. Because it is a hassle trying to fit a bunch of shit into a tiny drawer. I'm, I'm warning you right now. You're going to do it anyway if you're one of those girlies. But don't say I didn't fucking warn you. Another reason why night of arrival in the first two weeks are so hard is because you're separated from your familia. And... I don't care like who you are, it's gonna fucking suck. Even if you're not that close with your family or I don't know, I, I don't know what your situation is. 
it's just fucking weird being with a group of fucking people that you don't know you guys are not gonna get along the first couple weeks i'm just warning you right now you guys are not gonna get along because there's so many different people from so many different parts of the world and so many conflicting personalities and so many different ages like you'll meet people as young as 17 year division and there'll be people in their fucking late 30s early fucking 40s okay maybe i guessed it i swear there was like a 40 year old in my division they they've like brought in the age so so many older people are joining now so you're gonna feel alone you're not gonna like be able to go home and like vent to your partner or your parents about like how annoying today was nah you gotta bottle all that shit in and just try to sleep and get your mind off it but you can't really sleep because you have like 18 year olds in the division that want to fucking party all night not literally but like they're venting and talking really loud or they're being goofy and then you have the other girl on the other side telling everybody to shut the fuck up but she's just adding to the noise and you're just there in your little fucking cot like god damn this shit sucks and i cried like the first two weeks i cried almost every night because i just missed my husband and my cats and my family like i was just thinking damn i really had the good life and now i'm here so yes it will be a struggle the first couple weeks also you're waking up like dumb early every day and not really doing anything but getting shot up uh getting tested and all this it's the processing days so basically they're just trying to see if you're medically fit to actually be in boot camp which is weird because like you did the same shit at meds but they do it again and people actually get separated in as mode because of processing days so your division will start out with like 80 something and by the end of this you'll probably lose like 10 people although in my experience i was an extremely small division so we started with like i want to say 87 87 people i think or maybe i'm guessing maybe it was 78 i don't know it was one of those numbers and we ended up like by graduation we only had 50 55 people so if you've been to boot camp and you're watching this for some reason you would know that's an incredibly strong small division usually divisions like i've I've always seen people like 70 something people, 60s like pushing it. I always see like 70 something people in the vision. That's just for me asking people that I went to, I'm in A school with and like graduating when, when I was at graduation, most divisions had like over 70 people. So yeah, we were a really small division for many reasons. A lot of people got medically as mode. A, lot, a few people got fucking separated for different reasons. Uh, one of them was because of like kissing somebody and i'll get to that in a little bit and just some people just don't know how to act and that's one thing i liked about my rdc's that if you were not a team player they would just kick you out which is nice because some people really come in there not wanting to work as a team being really difficult for no fucking reason well you could go be difficult in another division maybe you'll figure it out over there so my advice for the first two weeks is write in your diary try to find somebody that you could vent to you know because Odds are you're going to connect with at least one person in your division. I know you, it might not seem like that when you first get in there, but you will connect with somebody. I was very lucky to have a bestie pretty much throughout the entirety of boot camp. Yeah, that shit was awesome because we were like-minded. We were both chill, mellow girlies. We didn't fucking care about drama. And we literally just sit around each other 24 fucking 7 because there are going to be times during boot camp, especially near the end, where you literally have nothing to do. So I would suggest not being a bitch and trying to be befriend somebody at least, so that way you're not completely bored in the last couple weeks of boot camp. Let's talk about some major evolutions. The first one you're gonna go to, which is the start of your week one, is swim. Oh, and I also like glossed over the fact that, um, so you're in a processing, like a holding unit when you first get into boot camp, and then you get put into your actual ship, and that's a fun little marching experience. Oh forgot to mention marching you're gonna march a lot you are going to march everywhere every day you might have seen like tiktoks or like videos of like army people and air force people like they'd be on little buses going to where they need to go not in a uh, navy boot camp i don't know about like their boot camp and their experience but everything in like navy boot camp is walking distance everything everywhere that you need to go so best believe you'll be walking there marching there as a fucking division so have fun with that it is going to fucking suck, especially in the beginning, because they give you boots and your feet, your feet have to get adjusted to those boots. I'm, I'm just going to warn you right now. If you're, if you're going to go to medical because you have blisters or something, they don't give a fuck. 
I literally had a rash on my foot and blisters and they were just like, good luck, bestie. Some people really enjoy marching though. And I'm not gonna lie, near the end, I enjoyed marching once we were actually like a good cohesive unit. But in the beginning, it sucks because nobody knows their left from right. The person that is singing your cadence might be off and that like throws everybody off. And then for some reason, our RDCs yelled at us for being off when it's really our A-Rock, which is what they call the girl that sings the one, two, three, four. She was so fucking off and we didn't really start marching good as a division until she got asthma for medical reasons. So yeah, shout out to that. So anyway, on to the evolution, swim. So if you know how to swim, just skip this part because this shit is not this shit is not gonna matter to you. But if you don't know how to swim and you're stressed about to swim, I'm here to tell you it's okay. Because I went to boot camp not knowing how to swim at all, and I ended up passing in the fifth week of boot camp. So how that how I do that, how that work. So basically swim, your division will jump off a 10-foot tower, you'll go into a 12-foot pool, and then you have to swim a certain amount of yards, I forget. You have to swim a certain amount of yards to pass and you never have to worry about swim anymore especially if you get that done the first week when you're supposed to however me and a few other people in my division not that many though but a few other people in my division did not know how to swim at all so when i jumped off that that 10 foot tower for the first time i sank all the way down went zoop all the way down because i had never experienced like not feeling the floor below my feet i didn't have a fear of water or anything it's just i've never experienced being in deep water i'm from new jersey i'm from the city so yeah we don't really i don't really like go out of my way to go to the beach and if i do i'm not going to fucking water i'm sunbathing so i flopped really hard and they had to get me out with like a metal pole like i held onto the pole and they dragged me out and then i went to the kiddie pool where basically they teach you swimming basics like they're going to teach you basic step by step and you have to piece it all together and figure it out for yourself i mean that's kind of what swimming is anyway like they can't like it's not like they're gonna like force you to swim like they, they can't you they, you can't physically like make somebody swim you have to learn at your own pace but it's even harder in boot camp because there's so many people also trying to learn and just the atmosphere so once you feel swim right you're gonna have to go back to the swimming pool which sucks ass because I, my ship was 40, or my ship, my building, my building was 40 minutes away, 40 minute walk, 40 minute march to the pool. So marching to the pool in the Chicago winter, the Windy City, and then having to march back home with wet hair, not fun, but I had to fucking do it. And it was a struggle because basically just to break it down for you when you go in there they give you like one shot to swim well and if you don't you're in remedial swim with like a ton of other people and the atmosphere is like kind of off and i was never scared of the pool i was never scared of water but being around so many people that were and like just the just the overall vibe it really threw me off so i think I was getting into my head a lot and that's why I struggled passing swim because it's really basic and it's not hard but just being in that kind of environment is not helpful like if I had like a little small group session I probably would have gotten it but no you're with people that are like crying and like flailing around and then you're trying to swim and they push you down and they bump into you and it's fucking annoying but you will learn because I learned and I didn't know uh, anything so just to give you like my highest point of boot camp was when I passed swim week five. So typically how swimming lessons go is that, um, like I said, they give you one shot to swim like in the kiddie pool from one end to the other. And if you fail, then remedial swim. However, this day there wasn't that many people at the pool. So they're like, okay, well, since there's not that many people, everyone's just gonna get a shot to jump off the tower. And I was like, eh. All I had ever done at that point was the kiddie pool. I never reached level two, which is like five foot water. Kiddie pool is three feet. And then once you graduate level two, you go to the tower. So I was going from the kiddie pool straight to the fucking tower. So I was super ner nervous, but I had, this was week five. So I had got into this mindset, this warrior toughness mindset. And I had told myself prior to getting into the pool that I was going to pass today. So at first I freaked out when they told me, oh yeah, we're going straight to the tower. But then I was like, wait, like, this is my opportunity to get this fucking shit over with. And girly, I fucking did. It was so, it wasn't hard. It was just like mentally distressing because I didn't want to fail. 
I really didn't want to fail. And I did it. Backflow, baby, fucking arm T push. You'll learn that if you don't know how to swim. And then once you pass swim, the following days is the float. Float is so easy if you know how to swim. And then you do, uh, what's it called? Abandoned ship, where it's also like impossible to fail that. It's just a little funzy activity. I mean, some people enjoy it. I thought it was fucking dumb, but yeah. You'll see when you get there. Basically, your division, if you pass the first time you're in your division, you guys work together, get on this floaty, and then, I sound so fucking, I sound horrible, the floaty. Um, yeah, you work together, you get on a floaty, and then you get off. That's pretty much it. The only shit thing is that you have to fucking jump off the tower again. Which, I say jumping, but it's not actually jumping. That's another thing that I feel like trips a lot of people up to is the tower. Like, the height of the tower is fucking 10 feet. So, if you're scared of heights like me, that really fucking sucks. And it's also like the buildup of it, because you're kind of just like standing there like this, right? And you're waiting for him to tell you step and then once you take a little step off the tower he taps your back pushes you he doesn't go like fucking that but he like pushes you forward so that way your head doesn't hit like the back of the tower you know what i mean and then you die if you're scared of heights i mean figure out something that will help you i know a lot of girls said they closed their eyes when they were falling down the tower personally me i kept my eyes open the whole time when i was in the water when i was going off the tower because i like to see where i'm going so if I close my eyes, I feel like my body is just fucking levitating in the air, you know what I mean? Like, I like to say, okay, I'm almost near the water, you know? But that's just me. The other evolutions is Marlin Spike. Girl, I fucking hated Marlin Spike. I hated line handling, especially because my rate, I'm not going to ever do any of that shit. So I was always like, why the fuck am I learning this? And it's kind of hard for me to, like, really absor absor absorb information because I always was lacking sleep because there's this thing in the navy called watch you'll learn about it and basically in boot camp you stand out your your compartment or you stand in the hallway for a few hours either two hours four hours and you just stand there doing nothing waiting for somebody to end for waiting for like a chief or petty officer to enter your apartment apartment your compartment and then you fucking greet them and tell them your whole fucking spiel and like, it's not that bad if you have it during the day, but if you have it, you can have it at midnight, you can have it like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. So effectively, you're only getting like fucking three hours of sleep that night, and then you have to go about your fucking day and learn how to fucking lion handle, learn how to firefight. I would be so tired, and I would look at the time, and it would only be like 10 a.m., and I was like, oh my fucking god, I still have an entire fucking day to go. So Mon Spike, all these like evolutions you're gonna do is just teamwork based really. Everybody's division is different, so I can't say what's gonna work for you and what's not. In my experience, my division, we had a lot of people in my division that, like they acted like they knew everything and they would always like, we had a lot of leaders. We had a lot of leaders in my division, strong personalities, people that wanted to take charge. And like, that's good and bad because it's nice that people have that initiative. But also, if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, and also if you're kind of a dick, and you don't know how to treat people, like you talk down to people, nobody's really gonna wanna listen to you. And then it's just gonna be like conflict, you know what I mean? So, yeah, we had a lot of that in my division. We failed horribly in Marlon Spike. It might have just been a my division thing, but yeah, we got like 50 something hits. Trust me, when you go to Marlon Spike, you're probably gonna get like fucking like 10, nine, maybe even less i didn't meet anybody else that had as many hits in one spike as my division did firefighting firefighting i actually enjoyed firefighting was fun um i don't really know how to describe it you're gonna learn about it do you actually fight fires not really like you might have to blow out like a tiny little flame that's about it uh the next thing is the opfa which is like your running assessments the opfa is the last one but the first one you do is the pacer and then you do an rdc assessment and then the last one's the opfa i would say the most important ones are the pacer and the opfa the rdc assessment it's just really that's it it's an assessment just to see where you're at the pacer is important because if you don't pass the pacer you won't move on with your division you'll get as mode and that did happen to a few girls Basically, the pacer is push-ups, planks, and then you have to run, uh, is, what's that called? I don't know, you just run back and forth over and over and over again, and you have to meet a certain amount of laps. That shit was not hard, but then again, I was, in my pacer, I think I was the last standing female, so 
I do like to run and I would highly suggest if you're out of shape, start running, okay? Like it's not like swimming, okay? You don't have an excuse. Swim, I don't have access to a pool. I, mean, I wasn't about to buy a membership to a pool or whatever, try to find a gym with a pool. Like that's too much fucking work. But you have legs, you could run. There was a lot of girls in my division that clearly did not run before going to boot camp. And boot camp is not really meant to put you in shape. I mean, it is, but also if you're not in shape in time with the rest of your division, you're going to get held back. So why put all that extra stress on you and like, you know, worry about that shit when you could just work on it now. So please look up like your minimum, minimum uh, passing times for the PT and work on that. So that way you're not struggling throughout your entirety of boot camp because there are some girls that got asthma and setback because they didn't pass their pacer or they failed the OPFA. Don't be that don't be that girly. That's annoying. And guys, guys too. I will say if you want like tips for running, it really is all about like endurance. So you do have to run uh constantly to like build yourself up so you're able to run for longer periods of time and also it's all about mindset as well for example for the opfa i only had three hours of sleep and i still managed to run 13 minutes for a mile and a half which is pretty good because i'm 25 and i think i think the like to pass like the minimum was like 15 minutes or some shit so I did really good. That was only with three hours of sleep because the stupid bitch in my division was like crying about like, oh, I have watch, but the OPFA. So the the girl in my division that makes the watch switched her out with me. So I probably could have did it way faster, but I was exhausted, but I really fucking pushed myself. I don't think I ever like tried so hard at something in my fucking life. I feel like vomiting after that run and I never feel like vomiting after running, but I was running really fast and also Freedom Fucking Hall is the worst fucking place on earth. Freedom Hall is where you're gonna do like your assessments, your fitness assessments. And the air there is so fucking dry. I would, ex it's like chemicals. It's like, if you ever painted a room and you know like how it smells really paint-like and musty in there for a bit, that is what Freedom Hall constantly is like. I don't know why, maybe they do that to make it more difficult. It's fucking weird, I don't know. Battle stations. Oh my god, battle stations, wow. So I can't really divulge too much about battle stations because, you know, they make you sign something that says you can't talk about battle stations. So I'm not going to divulge too much about battle stations, but I will say I had a super unique experience with battle stations because the place where battle stations is held was under construction, was under renovation when I was in boot camp. So I never got to experience actual battle stations. I had a different form of battle stations. And I'm just gonna tell you that shit was literally cake. It was so cake. And yes, you do have to wake up. Um, can I say that? I don't know. I don't know, I don't wanna divulge too much though cause I'm kinda scared. I don't wanna get like put in prison because I spoke about battle stations. But don't worry about it. That's like near the end of your bootcamp experience. It's teamwork based. By this point, you guys will be working as a good team, as a good unit, because you've been together for nearly two months. So don't stress about it. You'll be okay. So now that I've covered the evolutions, I'm just going to tell you briefly a little bit about boot camp life. So you usually will like wake up like Reveille, which is the time everybody should be up, is 6 a.m. So I would typically wake up like an hour before that, like 5 a.m. to get ready or 5 30 depending how exhausted i was or if i had watched that night you might notice my hair is short i did cut it off before boot camp just to make my life easier do you have to cut off your hair should you cut off your hair i don't know that's up to you personally i loved it because it saved me a lot of time i didn't have to like slick my hair back in a bun i pretty much was up and ready to go like literally i would just put my uniform on my glasses and that's it, fix my bed, good to go. Whereas a lot of girls had to like make their bun proper and you know, sometimes it would still look like shit and our RDC would yell at, at them. But I know short hair isn't for everybody. So you could use a pr protective style, but just know you're gonna have to take it out at some point because why the fuck would you keep the same protective style in for two months? Some girls did that. I feel like that's like a lot, that, like that's extra because you're sweating and um, you know, you if you failed swimming, you're gonna have to swim a lot with all that shit in your hair, all those chemicals. Uh, but I know a lot of girls do it because they don't want to deal with their hair. Personally, I mean, you do you. That's up to you. You will receive letters if your family loves you. That's always nice. And it's also a good morale booster. 
so yeah like every night before i went to bed i would read all the letters my family gave me they usually pass out the letters like at night right before you go to bed so you know just something to look at before you sleep your family can send you packages just keep in mind that your rdc's are going to inspect your package when you open it so try not to get anything that would break the rules or things that are awkward and embarrassing to bring uh for example i mean why would you but your family can't send you your phone um don't send nudes don't get nudes from your partner if you're a guy i guess so it was kind of embarrassing for me because my mom would send me like the most random shit like she sent me like a star like a pen that was a star one time and she sent me a coloring book which was funny she sent me a like a crossword puzzle book but my rdc's took that away from me for some reason and i never got it back so i was pretty pissed about that uh no i'm lying i did get it back but i got it back on graduation shame i also got a lot of baby wipes too because personally me i need to wipe my butthole with baby wipes they don't have baby wipes at the next they don't have baby wipes anywhere in boot camp so yeah that's also another thing that i brought with me and when i ran out it was rough so yeah i got baby wipes because i just like being clean and a lot of the girls would clown me for it because i would get baby wipes so often but fuck it yo i i'd rather at least i know i'm nice and clean down there okay and that's another thing I forgot to mention, like chow, which is food. You get fit fed three times a day. Did I lose weight during boot camp? Fuck no, I did not. I lost a single pound because you think, I don't know, bro. I don't know what they put in that food. It is very fucking calorie dense food, I think. Because God damn, and I would stack it up too. Like I would get a lot of food because, you know, our meals would sometimes be spread out far apart and we're not snacking throughout the day. So I would eat a lot. And honestly, Everybody's opinion is different, but I enjoyed the food. I thought the food was fucking banging and I and I fucked it up. I ate a lot of food, lost only one pound. A lot of girls in my division did not lose any weight or they gained weight, which is fucking weird. Cause you would think, you know, you would think, oh, boot camp is very rigorous. Nah, like the exercises are not fucking hard. Push-ups, planks, you do like weird fucking shit like that. Like, what is that, bro? It's literally how like 80 year old people uh, work out so I think I became more out of shape going through boot camp than if I would have just like stayed home and went to the gym but at the same time like everybody's activity levels is different so for somebody else that was probably like a lot but there were also people that lost weight during boot camp it's just like anything like you just have to watch what you eat like don't get the french toast just get the sausage and you know little fucking fruits on the side me I got the french toast the granola I got also a little like breakfast sandwich bagel I would I'm telling you, I went fucking nuts in boot camp. I don't think I ever ate so much in my life. So you will get beat. I thought I would never get beat. And by beat, intensive exercise, IT, you will get beat. It's going to happen, okay? Just brace for it. Whether you get singled out or you get beat as a division, RDCs are basically just trying to see where you fuck up. I'm sorry, I have to adjust my shirt because it really bothers me when it's crooked. But RDCs are basically just trying to see you fuck up so they could beat you. It is what it is. I mean, just do your best. Try to get through the exercise. I had an RDC in boot camp that would literally be my division at least like three, four times a week for the smallest shit. And then he would berate us and make us feel like shit and put us all in a horrible mood. I couldn't stand that guy. I couldn't stand him at all. Like, you know how people speak fondly about how they like their RDCs? I had three. I still don't fuck with that guy. He was annoying as fuck. Uh, the other two though, I... I really like them and I do miss them. But him, he could fucking rot. He was so annoying. He would always like, I don't know. He always just put me in a bad fucking mood. I couldn't stand him. And he beat us a lot. You know, you'd be ready for bed. You just ate. No, you better get beat. Like do eight counts, um, fucking sitting in a chair, an invisible chair, shit like that. It was so fucking annoying. Near the end, I was just like really half-assing that shit. And then he would always call me out. He like, waiting on you, Jam. Oh, knees touch the deck. Back to zero. Like, bro, leave me the fuck alone, respectfully. One big tip I have at boot camp is don't fall in love. It's sad that I have to say that, but because I'm a girl, girls are only in integrated divisions. I've never seen a full female division. I heard they did that during COVID, but COVID's not really a thing anymore. So you will be sharing like your experiences with guys. You guys sleep in different rooms, but you know, you'll be around guys a lot and i'm mainly saying this to the girls because i noticed that a lot of girls in relationships were really unfaithful in comparison to the guys in my division i don't know why that was listen 
listen, okay, I, I understand you're young and like, I don't know, you have hormones and stuff, but if you get caught kissing, cuddling, or touching somebody in boot camp, you will get set back. That happened to people in my division. So why even fucking risk it? You joined the Navy for personal reasons. Maybe you wanted to better yourself. Maybe you want need the money. You want to support your family, this and that. Why would you risk it all for a guy that you're never going to see again once you get out of boot camp because you guys are going to completely different schools? It's just so unlikely that this would work outside of boot camp. It only works inside of boot camp because you guys don't have your phone. You don't have outside... You know, you're going a little like crazy and you need somebody like, okay, have a friend, like vent to somebody, but don't try to do anything with them in boot camp. And then people are going to talk shit about you. People are going to be waiting to see you fuck up so they can snitch on you. Why the fuck would you want to go through that? But yeah, there was this one girl who had a full ass fiance that she said was watching her kid that wasn't his. And then she got asthma because she was kissing a guy. If you're in a performing division like I was, good luck. So typically divisions, right? Like there's like training groups and those are like the divisions and the training groups. So I think there's like six or five um, train divisions, right? So you have like in a one in five or one in six chance in being in a performing division. I was in the state flag division. And in the beginning, I fucking hated it because it's marching. It's more marching. But by the end of that shit, you become a marching expert and you actually like performing and... You know, I was able to perform at like three graduations. Some people perform that more because depending on like your height, they might need to fill in for another division. So yeah, but I performed at three. Two of them were not mine. One of them was my own, obviously. And it's kind of like a bittersweet experience because it's nice being apart and like seeing like people be reunited with their families. And like, this is like a big moment in people's lives, but it also sucks because now you got to go back home to your compartment. <laughs> like... So, but I, I kind of enjoyed being a state flag. I'm not gonna lie. I was Wyoming. So, yeah. And because you're constantly practicing for uh, graduation and stuff like that, you miss out on like extra firefighting practice, extra line handling practice. But I didn't like any of that shit. So I really didn't mind. The only thing that sucked about it was like having to be on your feet all fucking day. That shit hurt. Yeah, if you're in a performing division, that's fun. State flags is fun. You could also like, um, be like playing an instrument or if you know how to play an instrument or doing like I think it's called drill or is it when like you're holding the gun and doing cool fun shit with it they might ask you if you've like done shit like that in high school or in the past and then they'll put you in a performing division I don't know why they put me in it because I never did any of that shit but they still put me in the performing division so I don't know but it was cool it was fun I liked it my division number was 922 only performing divisions have 900 every other division i think will start with like a one or something so yeah 922 right over left and down to the deck 922 anyways just sum everything up take everything one day at a time at boot camp don't worry about what you're gonna do next week it's gonna be stressful it's meant to be stressful it's meant to be challenging but most of all it's gonna be boring as fuck so if you're stressed the fuck out, don't like be hard on yourself because everybody else was stressed. I was extremely stressed. But now I look back and I'm like, damn, I miss that fucking kind of stress because I'm in A school right now, one of the hardest A schools in the Navy. And it's a just, it's a different level, bro. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. Depending on your rate, depending on your rate. It get, like you might only be in A school for like three weeks. I'm in A school for fucking six months and I'm fucking dying. But I won't go too into A school because... I want to wait till I actually finish A school so I can give you guys my full account of what A school is like. Try to be a team player, make friends. Um, if you're coming in as an E1 or E2, if you want to take a leadership role, go ahead. That way you could like pr be promoted. Your RDCs could choose to promote you. If you're coming in as an E3, why would you like take a job? There are leadership roles, but like why? Because you you're not going to get promoted and you're going to deal with a lot of extra stress. I didn't want any jobs in boot camp. I was kind of like forced into being part of the head crew, which is like the bathroom cleanup crew. But that was kind of fun because like I had a few friends in the head crew. So like, you know, it was just something to do. Like in boot camp, so you, sometimes you're just fighting shit to do because you're so fucking bored. Uh, like shining your boots. Um, you're going to fold your clothes a lot in a certain Navy way, but that's just not challenging. But once you get through it, you go through graduation, you see your family again and they hug you. 
and they're so proud of you, you'd be like, okay, yeah, that shit was worth it, you know? And now you could actually kind of start your Navy career because you're going to go through A school and actually learn about your job. But boot camp is basically just to beat you down and get you into that military type mindset. But yeah, see, my video is 40 fucking minutes long, so I'm going to wrap it up here because now i got to edit this shit so it's not too damn long. Hopefully this video was helpful to somebody and I wish you the best of luck and whatever you do, Navy or not. Okay, peace out.